Neon signs are made of glass tubes bent into letters or shapes and filled with inert gas. When the electric current hits the electrodes in the tubes, electrons flow through the gas, making its atoms glow. The type of gas and glass determine the color of the light. In a clear glass tube, argon gas gives off blue light, while neon gas produces red light. To create vivid designs, they can parlay those two base colors into more than 80 additional colors by using glass tubes that are colored with fluorescent powders. For instance, blue glowing argon gas in a yellow tube creates a green light. To shape the tube, they use a glass blowing technique. Following a pattern drawn on a fire resistant sheet, they mark where they have to bend the tube. Then they heat each spot on a device called a ribbon burner, whose propane flame is a blazing 650 degrees Celsius. Within half a minute, the glass softens enough to be pliable. They gently bend the tube, then blow into the uncorked end to restore the tube's original diameter. With each bend, they check the shape against the pattern, every so often pressing a wooden block along the tube to equalize the width. Argon gas emits steel blue light, but this blue colored tube will change that to dark blue. After shaping, they cut the excess and rub the coloring powder off the ends. Now they can attach these glass casings which contain electrodes. They fuse an electrode to each end of the tube using a propane hand torch and a flexible latex blowing tube. They seal the glass around one electrode, but leave the other one open. Then, using what's called a crossfire burner, they create a tubulation, a thin tube with a bubble that'll act as a passageway into the open electrode. They fuse the tubulation to that electrode. then carefully inject a drop of mercury into the open end of the tubulation. Argon gas needs a touch of mercury to brighten the color it emits. Neon gas doesn't. Using what's known as an end torch, they fuse the open end of the tubulation to a long glass tube leading to a pumping system. They connect the electrodes to the system then power it up. The pump vacuums out the air, then injects the gas. The electrical current makes the atoms in the gas glow. To trap the gas inside the tube, they use the crossfire burner to remove the tubulation and seal off the open electrode, making sure the drop of mercury has descended into it first. They dip the back of the sign into black paint. This will make the lettering or design stand out. They use a brush to spread the coat evenly and remove the excess. Next, they'll light up the sign at high voltage for a half hour. This will dry the paint and, more importantly, transform the liquid mercury into vapor that spreads throughout the sign. Using transparent clips, they mount the sign onto a black plexiglass background to make it stand out even more. Finally, they connect the protruding electrode wires to a transformer. This transformer converts the standard 110 volt current from our electrical outlets into a high voltage current, into the 3,000 to 15,000 volts you need to light up a neon sign.